Is it working now? Maybe there's just a huge delay. I don't know if this is my internet connection or if this is YouTube or what. Can you see me? Sorry, I'm just waiting for the chat. Um, microphone, are you still working? I'm not sure why. Oh, okay. Okay, I think people are here now. Sorry, I have this. I have this going on my screen, and and I have this going on YouTube. So I'm trying to make sure it's working, and it. I feel like it is, but I feel like there might be like a 30 second delay. So, um, maybe that's just something weird with the internet. Maybe YouTube is being weird today. Um, but make sure. Just let me know if you can see me, if you can hear me. Maybe we'll edit this a little bit edit this out a little bit later. Let me restart my slides. Okay, we'll just start over from the beginning and um, maybe I can clip this up a little bit at the end. Oh, maybe I can... Uh, we'll see if that actually starts recording on my end. So maybe we can just clip this up and put it on there. Yeah, more like a 60 second delay. Yeah, there's a huge delay. I'm not sure if this is me or my internet or if this is just YouTube. Hopefully this will be better later. All right, so let's just start over then. Um, oh yeah, yeah, we're saying there's a huge time difference anyway. So let's just start over then. Um, so what we're talking about today is uh, Chinese, um, sorry, let me, I'm a little bit frazzled, let me drink some tea. So welcome to another live stream, thanks for sticking with me. We had some technical difficulties and so we tried to switch it over to a new thing. Hopefully everything's working right now, maybe there's a huge delay, but maybe that's okay. So if there's something weird going on in the chat where um, I try to ask you a question and it takes a long time to answer, that's probably just a YouTube or an internet delay, but welcome to another live stream, thanks for being here. Today what we're talking about is common Chinese terms that come up in the name of single herbs and in the names of our formulas. Because when I ask people about what's the most difficult thing for them in Chinese medicine, or at least what's the most difficult thing in terms of learning Chinese herbs, the number one thing I get is uh, the most difficult thing about Chinese herbs is the fact that it's in Chinese. So sometimes I think it's helpful to go over some of those common Chinese terms that we'll see come up over and over, and then that we can start way, then that way we can start to assign some meaning to these words, and they're not just random words on a page that they actually have some meaning and you can maybe make some connection to it. So this is something that we talked about a little bit in the single herb review class and talking about common terms that come up in single herbs. So we'll do a little bit of that, but then we're going to talk about Chinese terms that are very common to come up in formula names as well. Um, Shrita says, actually, that's the easiest part for me. Um, yeah, and I, I think some, sometimes people say it depends on uh, uh, what, your, what your language background is like and everything like that. And so I've, I've even talked to some Chinese students that they say, I don't know how you guys do this. I don't know how Americans do this. Like this, this makes so much sense to me because I speak Chinese, but this would make no sense um, if I didn't actually know Chinese. Hello. Uh, yeah, this this will be up on the replay. We had some technical difficulties, so I, I know not everyone can stick around for a long time, but hopefully this will be up and hopefully be, it will be okay now. I think everything's gonna be fine. We're all gonna make it. So where were we? 
Oh yeah, it's good. Yeah, you lived in China for eleven years. Yeah, that's that that kind of makes it easy. And so um, sometimes there are other people just like this is just random words on the page. So let's see if we can attach some some meaning to some of these words. Um, hopefully this still works. So when we're talking about single herbs, uh, a common uh, an easy place to start is looking at the names of plant parts. So this is kind of small. I'm not sure if you can see all of this, but um, maybe we can zoom in on a couple. And so this could be something, maybe you don't want to memorize all these in the very beginning as you go through it, but it might be the sort of thing that as you go through and you're learning your single herbs, see if you can start to recognize some of these words and maybe kind of refer back to them. So we have some common ones like uh, ye means leaf. And so we have a lot of uh, Chinese herbs with ye in the name. We have zutsu ye, danju ye, song ye. Those are all leaves. And so that's maybe something that if you can remember that, that can uh, create some connection in your mind. Um, it's kind of funny. I think I told this story in the single herb review class. But when I first started teaching herbs one, I had a student who was really into Kanye West. And so when we first started going through herbs, we started Ma Huang Gui Zhe Zitsu Ye. And so she saw this and was like, oh, yeah, that's like Kanye West. And so that's how she remembered uh, the functions of Zitsu Ye. And I had to be like, be careful, because the word Ye just means leaf. So uh, we're going to be seeing a lot of herbs with Ye in the name. So maybe that's not the best way to remember it. But it turns out throughout the entire semester, whenever we had an herb that was a leaf or a ye, she was able to come up with a story about Kanye West. And that's, um, that's how she was able to remember the herb. So it's kind of like, whatever works for you, do that. Uh, Zhen is another common one. So Zhen means seed or kernel. So we have things like Suanzao Ren, sour date seed, Xing Ren, apricot seed, Tao Ren, peach kernel. Things like uh, huo ma ren is cannabis uh, seed or fire hemp seed. So that's another one you'll see pop up a lot. Uh, pi, pi means skin. Like when we say the lung governs the skin, this is the word we're using, pi. But when in the context of herbs, this also just means the outer layer. So we have like shengjiang pi is the skin of shengjiang or fresh ginger. Fuling pi is the skin of fuling, but we also have things like songbai pi is bark, so it's like the skin of a tree. Zhogui pi is cinnamon bark. Uh, also with uh, fruits, it can mean peel, so chen pi, ching pi is the peel, so it just means the skin as in the outer layer. So that's going to be another one that pops up a lot. So this is something that we can kind of pay attention to as we're going through single herbs, and this can kind of have them make more sense. Now I'm real paranoid about if we're still going or if I'm frozen. So let me uh, switch over, see if I can uh, bring up my YouTubes and see if I'm still there. This might take too long, but I'm just kind of curious to see if I'm still there. says I'm live and I'm showing up on the screen with a bit of a delay. So good enough for me. I think we're still going. Maybe I'll try to download this and clip this part out so it's more uh, relevant on the replay. So that was plant parts. Oh, by the way, uh, I mentioned this on the first one that didn't work, but if you want to download these slides, they're in the description below of the first one. So. Um, so these are available on the website. It's just go to the other live stream and download it, I guess. I don't know. Um, but you can get these on the website. Another common one we can look at is colors, that we have um, a lot of the names of herbs have the color included. And so um, sometimes it's good to differentiate just because we have two different herb, we have the same herb that's two different colors, like we have chi shao is red peony, and bai shao is white peony, or bai ren shen is white ginseng, hong ren shen is red ginseng. So sometimes those colors are good to know. Another common one we have is um, like zi means purple. Zi means purple, so we have a lot of herbs with purple in the name, like 
Zi uh, Tsuye is purple re reviving leaf. Zi um, Cao, Cao means herb, so Zi Cao is purple herb. Zi Hua Di Ding, Zi means purple, and like we, like we had on the previous slide, Hua means flower, so Zi Hua Di Ding is purple flower, or violet, as in roses are red, violets are blue. So sometimes just you'll see these colors pop up. Sometimes they don't always have a lot of meaning. It's just the color of the plant. There's not necessarily a five phase correspondence there, but sometimes it's just good to know. Like when you see, see hey germa, hey means black is in black sesame. We have the three huangs, the yellow things. So sometimes those are just fun to know. Another fun one that comes up is the five flavors. Now these actually aren't very common in herb names, but they're kind of fun to know because it's like the herb is named after its flavor and it still has that flavor and the actions associated with that flavor. So for example, sour is swan. And so do we have any herbs with swan in the name? Uh, actually we do. Uh, swan ren means sour date seed. And so even though swan ren is in the category herbs that calm the spirit, it still has a sour flavor and it has an action of inducing astringency to stop sweating. So it's kind of fun that the name of the herb is Swan Zao Ren, sour date seed. It's sour in flavor and it has the actions associated with the sour flavor. Ku means bitter. Can you think of any herbs with ku in the name? It's like I'm asking this question to the chat, but there's such a delay, you're probably not going to be able to answer me. So I'll just give you the answer. Uh, ku shen means bitter root. Shen means root, like ren shen. Ku shen means bitter root. It's in the category herbs that clear heat and dry dampness. So the name of the herb is ku shen, bitter root. It's bitter in flavor, and it has those qualities of the bitter flavor. It clears heat and dries dampness, especially for damp heat in the lower jowl. Gan means sweet. So what's our herb with gan in it? This one should is hopefully easy. Gan sao means sweet herb. So gan sao is sweet herb. It's sweet in flavor. Remember the sweet flavor tonifies and moistens. So gan sao tonifies qi and it also has a moistening action. So gan sao is sweet herb and it's indeed sweet in flavor. Xin means acrid or pungent or spicy. This one may be a little bit more difficult. Can you think of any herbs with xin in the name? Xin, uh, um, so the one we have is xi xin, is in the category warm acrid herbs that release the exterior. Uh, so xi means thin, xin means acrid, so xi xin means thin acrid, and it's indeed thin when you look at the herb sample, and it's very, or even described as piercingly acrid. It's very good at dispersing cold and releasing the exterior. I think uh, Bensky puts it in the release the exterior category. I think other books put it in the warm the interior category, because it kind of does both. Um, yeah, so xi xin means thin acrid. Xian is a difficult one. Salty. I actually, I don't think we have any herbs with, an, with the word salty in it. I, I went around and asked some Chinese teachers before if they knew of any herbs with the word salty in it, and even they couldn't think of any. So we have certain herbs that are prepared with salt, uh, but we usually just say zhi. We don't actually say uh, salt. So xian, that one doesn't work so well. But then after that, so those are the five flavors, and then when we say there are five flavors, there are like seven or eight five flavors. So if we go on to the other non-flavor flavors, don means bland. Can you think of anything with bland in it? Uh, one I can think of is don do uh, means bland uh, bean prepared. Another one is don juye. Don juye means bland bamboo leaf. And so this, this is in a clear heat category, but um, it's still, when we look at the, the flavors or the properties of the herb, it still has a bland flavor. And remember, the bland flavor has an action of promoting urination. So Don Juye indeed does promote urination. It's especially good for heart heat pouring into the small intestine, causing urination problems. So uh, that's another one with bl uh, bland in the name. 
Xiang means aromatic. And we actually have a lot of herbs with uh, the word aromatic in them. I'm thinking the only, the only one I can think of from the aromatic category, though, is Huoxiang. Huoxiang is, what's that stuff that hippies smell like? Patchouli. Huoxiang is patchouli. Huo is just the name of the plant, but Xiang means, um, sorry, I'm getting distracted. Xiang uh, means aromatic or fragrant. So Huoxiang is an aromatic herb. Remember, aromatic has the, the property of transforming dampness. And so Huoxiang is in that category, aromatic transformed dampness. It turns out we have a lot of other herbs um, with Xiang in the name, but they're actually in the regulate qi category. So like Mu Xiang, Mu means wood or tree, and Xiang means fragrance, so wood fragrance. Um, xiang Fu, Tan Xiang, a lot of those regulate qi herbs have that word aromatic in it. Um, going back to, uh, we talked about Dan. Sorry, I missed this because we're, we're on a bit of de delay here. What about Dan Shen? So this is a difficult one because this is kind of the problem with, uh, with Chinese is that we have a lot of words that in pinyin sound the same, but they're different Chinese characters. So the Dan in Dan Shen is a different Dan. That one doesn't mean bland. I think that Dan is the same as Dan Tian. It means like cinnabar or um, cinnabar. And so that's referring to the color of the root is that Don Shen has a red color. And so, uh, oh, here, some of, yeah. I wasn't just making that up. Don and Don Shen stands for cinnabar red. Yeah, so it's the same Don as Don Tian when you talk about breathing into your Don Tian. It probably has a different tone. Spoiler alert, alert I'm very bad with my tones in Chinese. But sometimes we even have words that are, um, they have the same sound, the same tone, but they're different Chinese characters, so they mean different things. Like if we go back to, um, oh, 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 I'm going too far. I wanted to go back to Xin. So Xin uh, means acrid, but also Xin first tone also means heart. And so sometimes that can be confusing that we'll have other herbs with xin in the name, like uh, chuan xin lian, um, uh, deng xin zao, things like that, that they'll have xin in the name, but that means heart. It doesn't mean acrid. So that's kind of like a confusing thing. So sometimes we have to look at it and make sense of it when we can. Other times we have to, we have to be careful. Um, so I just think that's kind of fun to go through uh, the five flavors that we actually, for most of the five flavors, we have an herb that kind of represents that flavor, and the name of the flavor is in the, is in the name of the herb. So I just think that's kind of fun, uh, kind of something to look at. Let's see if we can scroll back through. I guess my computer's being slow too. Yeah, so those are the, the five flavors. So those are some words that we can look at when we're looking at um, single herbs. And again, sometimes just as you go through, the, through these things and you uh, look up what the name of the herb means, you can start to kind of see some patterns and make some connections. And to me, that just makes it easier to remember the herb. I know that some people, like I said, some people just make up stories that Don Juye sounds like Kanye West had a friend, Dan, with a broken heart and a UTI. Some, some people just make up their own stories. But for me, for some reason, knowing the translation of the Chinese just made it a little bit easier. And so as you go through, if you pay attention to that, you can start to collect those meanings of the Chinese words. And so we have things like jin yin hua. Jin means gold. Yin means silver. Hua means flower. So jin yin hua is gold and silver flower. Um, uh, croissant... Uh, not chrysanthemum, that other flower. <sighs> Sorry, I was thinking Juhua, Jinyanhua, Persithia, I don't know. Uh, uh, gold and silver flower. Anyway, when we get to um, formulas, 
we kind of we have a sort of a different set of vocabulary. And so sometimes plant the names of plants aren't necessarily going to come up in formula very much, but they might occasionally. The colors sometimes come up in formulas. But I think one useful thing to know when yeah, Lonicera, I was trying to I was trying to think of the real name. Honeysuckle. Sorry, I was trying to think of the English name. Honeysuckle flower. Oh, like Lonicera floss. No, I don't like Lonicera doesn't sound like a real flower. Honeysuckle flower. Sorry. Jinian Hua, honeysuckle flower. Haven't had enough coffee this morning. But thank you for telling me Lana Sarah. Otherwise, I would have been I would have said chrysanthemum, and that's not right. Anyway, when we get to formulas, sometimes like a really convenient place to start is just counting the numbers. Um, yeah, I bet everybody in the chat was yelling honeysuckle at me, and there, there was enough of, de of a delay that I couldn't, uh, couldn't think of it. So I'm glad you guys are more on top of the ball than I am, because I guess it's been a rough morning. So when we look at, um, when we look at formulas, sometimes it can, uh, an easy place to start is just numbers, counting in Chinese. Um, so we have, sorry again for the Chinese people, my tones are very bad. E R San Si Wu Liu Qi Ba Jiu Shi, and so sometimes these will come up uh, in our formula names a lot. Uh, oh, E R San Si Wu Liu Qi Ba Jiu Shi, and then another uh, when we kind of add in there, another word Wei means ingredient. So whey also means flavor, like when we talk about the five flavors, we use the word whey, but in the context of formulas, we use whey to mean ingredient. And so a lot of times we'll combine those two together where basically the name of the formula will be the number of ingredients. And that kind of makes it easy to remember things. So if you can remember your Chinese numbers, that can make it easier to remember your formula names. So kind of this fun game we can play is can we go through each of the numbers and uh, count uh, with formulas? And so basically, like, do we know a formula that has each of the numbers in the name? So starting with one, actually, E is kind of is a little bit of a more difficult one because we don't really have a lot of formulas just with just one ingredient. I mean, we do, like, we have a formula called Du Shen Tong, which means unaccompanied ginseng decoction or only ginseng decoction, but it doesn't have the number one in it. So that's kind of something if you want to make fun of an herbalist or, or something like that, like, like, like we had someone who like, she always needed to look things up in the book. She had that, that little acupuncture desk reference and was always looking things up and you're like, oh, that person, she would have to look up the ingredients to du shen tong in her book. Um, so that was kind of like a little Chinese medicine burn. Um, apparently I'm, I'm not a very nice person. So E, can you think of a formula with the name E in it? So one that comes to mind is actually E Guan Jin, and that does have the character for one, but E Guan Jin we tend to translate as a uh, linking decoction. But another one with uh, uh, the number one in it is Liu Yi San, six to one powder. So Liu means uh, six, E means one, and so this is talking about the ratio of ingredients. You have six parts of hua shi to one part of gan sao, and so this is a formula for uh, clearing summer heat. So here we're not talking about the number of ingredients, but we're talking about the ratio of the ingredients. So maybe that can help you remember things. How about the number two is R. Can you think of any formulas with two in the name? Actually, there are quite a few. So let's see some, some that come to mind. Archentong means two aged decoction. Uh, this is referring to two of the ingredients. The formula actually has four or five ingredients, but this is referring to the two chief ingredients, uh, Chen Pi, which is aged tangerine peel, and also Ban Xia, which doesn't have the word Chen in it, but is still aged. So those are two aged ones. That's referring to the two chief ingredients. Our Xian Tong is two immortal decoction. 
And again, this has more than two ingredients, but it's referring to the chief ingredients. Uh, one of them is xian mao, the other one is yin yang huo, horny goat weed, which also goes by the name xian ling pi. So this is a formula where uh, the two chief herbs have xian or immortal in it, so we call it two immortal decoction. Arger Wan is a two solstice pill, Mohan Lian and Nu Genza. We call it that way because one of them is picked at the summer solstice and one of them is harvested at the winter solstice. So we uh, put them together and that's just those two ingredients together. We can tonify kidney yin without being sticky or cloying. So, so we might give those two herbs just by themselves or we might modify other formulas with those herbs. So for, for R, for two, we actually have a, quite a few examples. San means three. Can we think of any formulas with three in the name? Uh, this one may be a little bit more difficult. Uh, let's think, what did I come up with? San Ren Tong. Remember, Ren means seed, so San Ren Tong means three seed decoction. Uh, I think this one is for uh, damp heat, uh, damp heat in the middle jiao. What's another one? San Zi Yang Qin Tong. So, San means three, zi. I'm pretty sure my tone marks are off here. I think zi should be third tone. San Zi Yang Qin Tong is three seeds to nourish one's parents. So this is a formula with three seeds. Zi zi zi, um, Lai Fu zi, and another zi that I can't think of right now. Bai Jie zi? I think it's Bai Jie zi. Uh, so it's for uh, uh, lung qi problems, cough that won't lie down. So that's another one. It's three seeds to nourish one's parents. So it has three zs in it. Si means four. This is a very unlucky number. Uh, this one should be easy. I think we have a lot, or we have some very famous formulas with si in it. So hopefully everyone can get this one. Uh, si jun zetong four gentlemen decoction, si wu tong, four substance decoction, so our major herb for, our major formula for tonifying qi and our major formula for tonifying blood. Si shen tong is another one. We I think we translate this as four miracle pill, but it's another formula that has four ingredients. This one is for diarrhea due to kidney yang deficiency, so it has like uh, bugu zhi, uh, rodoko, and things like that. And so, so those are some of our formulas of four or si. Wu is five. I think we have some, I think we have some formulas five in it. Let me think. Um, wu wei xiao du yin. Uh, so this one, the word wei means ingredient. So wu wei is five ingredient overcome toxicity drink. So xiao du is another common Chinese a uh, phrase that we'll see in formulas, because du means poison or toxin, and so xiao du means overcome uh, or eliminate toxin. So we have things like puji xiao du yin, wu wei xiao du yin, things like that. Um, we also have bai du, bai du is overcome. I think xiao du we say eliminate toxin, bai du we mean overcome pathogens, like ren shen bai du song. Anyway, so for wu, we have five ingredient overcome, uh, eliminate toxin, drink. Wu Ling San, uh, five ingredient uh, powder with poria. The, the Ling is Fu Ling and Ju Ling. Or uh, Wu Pi San, again Pi means skin or peel, so uh, Wu Pi San or Wu Pi Yin has five peels in it. Things like uh, Shang Zhang Pi, Fu Ling Pi, Song Bai Pi, has a bunch of peas in it. Liu means six. I think this one should be easy. I think we have a lot uh, some famous formulas with the number six in it. One is Liu Wei Di Huang Wan. So again, Wei means ingredient. So Liu Wei means six ingredient. So this formula has six ingredients. Uh, I was gonna say them: Shu Di, Shan Yao, uh, Shan Ju Yu, Mu Dan Pi, Zi Xie Fu Lin. So six ingredient with Romania. 
Liu Jun Zetong is six gentlemen decoction, so we start with four gentlemen decoction and we add two more gentlemen to make it six gentlemen decoction. So Ren Chen Baiju Fu Ling Jir Gan Sao are four gentlemen, and then we add the two extras, uh, Ban Chan Chen Pi. So again, it has six, it's, six is in the name of the formula, it has six ingredients. Liu Shen Wan is another one. I'm not sure that we actually learn this or use this anymore. I don't think we can get it anymore because it has like frog poison and other toxic things in it. Uh, Liu Shen Wan was for miracle pill. I think it was mostly originally used for like severe sore throat, heat toxicity in the throat. But then I think some people would also, it became common to use externally for uh, herpes zoster. I'm not sure if you can actually get it anymore. So those are our sixes. Qi is seven. Can you think of any formulas with seven in the name? This one's difficult. This one I had to look them up. Because I don't think, because I found some formulas, but I don't think there are any that we learn in school usually. So Qi is a little bit more difficult. Oh, here, I can just click that to go to YouTube. Am I still live on YouTube? Yeah, I'm still going there. Look at me. Chi means seven. What are some other uh, formulas that have the word seven in it? Chi uh, Wei Baiju Song. I'm not very familiar this, with this one, but again, Wei means ingredient. So this is seven ingredient with Baiju or Attract a Lotus powder. So that's one that has seven ingredients and seven is in the name. Chi Pian, a uh, seven peel drink. And so I think it's five peel and we add two more peels to make it uh, seven peel. I think we add Ching Pi and, and another peel in there. Um, so those, I'm not sure those are one we learn. Uh, this one I thought was funny when I, I actually had to look this up to look up, uh, to find formulas with number seven on, on it. I thought this one was good. Chi Ba. Chi bao, chi bao mei ran dan, seven treasure pill for beautiful whiskers. And so this is this is a formula that uh, tonifies liver blood, but specifically for uh, turning the hair black and turning the hair of the beard black. So the, the chief herb in this one is uh, hu shou wu, but it has seven ingredients, tonifies liver, and helps with the hair. Ba means eight. What are some formulas with eight in the name? Ba Jin Tong is a, is a very common one. So this is Si Jun Zetong plus Si Wu Tong is eight treasure decoction. The one we don't want to get it mixed up with is Ba Jung San and eight rectification powder. And so Ba Jin Tong tonifies qi and blood. Ba Jung San is for damp heat in the lower jiao. Don't get those confused because a lot of times they're right next to each other on the shelf. And it's very bad if you mix them up. Uh, and then we have another uh, Ba Wei Di Huang Wan. Uh, and so that's, that's again, we could start with Liu Wei, six ingredient with Romania. If we add two more ingredients, then it becomes Ba Wei Di Huang Wan, eight ingredient with Romania. And this one, I think the extra two are Wu Wei Tzu and Huang Qi. So it's for yin deficiency when there's sweating. So the Wu Wei Tzu induces astringency and the Huang Qi stabilizes the exterior to, to stop sweating. So Ba Wei Di Huang Wan is specifically for yin deficiency with sweating. Jiu, Jiu is nine. Can we think of a nine formula? Uh, the only one I know of or the only one that we learn is Jiu Wei Chang Hu Tang. And so this is, again, Wei means ingredient, so this is nine ingredient with Changhu, or nototrigium in it. Um, so remember when we talked about in single herbs, uh, Changhu is in the category warm, acid release, the exterior. When you see Changhu, think dampness. So an external attack with signs of dampness, like body, body ache, body heaviness, joint pain. So that's what Jiu uh, Wei Changhu Tang is for, is for an external attack of wind cold with dampness. Sure means 10. Can we think of a 10? So this one is a little bit weird. It's kind of like the, the Iguan Jin technically has the word one in it, but we don't translate it as one. We have another one, Shichuan Dabutong. I think Bensky translates this as all-inclusive, great tonifying decoction. Um, but here actually, sure means 10. 
this literally translates to 10 complete. And so it's just kind of like, one, it does have 10 ingredients in it, but it's also 10 is a nice round number. A lot of times in Chinese, we talk about things in powers of 10. When we say the 10,000 things, we mean all the things. When we say, uh, um, Shen Nong tasted the 100 herbs, we don't mean he tasted exactly 100 herbs, we mean he tasted all of the herbs. So here when you say sure here, we just mean it's uh, it has a level of completeness that it's full. So Shichuan Da Butong, on the one hand, it does have 10 ingredients, but we um, translate this as all inclusive. Another one that I'm not sure if we learned this one or not is uh, Shi Zhao Tong. Uh, Shi means 10, Zhao is referring to Da Zhao. So this is 10 Jujube decoction. And this is a formula we probably don't use very much because it's basically a bunch of harsh expellents like Gan Sui, Da Ji, and then in order to kind of harmonize the formula, they add 10 dates to it. And this is, this is kind of the interesting one because the reason we, the reason we use dot zhao here is because normally when we want to harmonize a formula or protect the middle zhao or something like that, we use gan zhao, licorice root. But remember about our 18 incompatible herbs, gan zhao is incompatible with a lot of those harsh expellents like um, gan sui, da ji, uh, things like that. So because, because of this incompatibility, we can't use gan sao in this formula. So as kind of a backup, we use uh, da zao uh, dates in order to protect the middle jiao from the harshness of those herbs and kind of harmonize everything. So uh, that's kind of in, that's just kind of, I think is a fun game to play is can you go through, can you count in Chinese with formulas? Things like Yi Guan Jin, Er Chen Tong, San Zi Yang Qin Tong, Si Jun Zi Tong, uh, Wu Wei Xiao Du Yin, Liu Jun Zi Tong, uh, Qi was a difficult one. We, we had like a Qi Pi Tong, Seven Peel Drink, Ba, Ba Zhen Tong, Ba Zheng San, Nine, I, the only one I know is uh, Jiu Wei Qiang Huo Tong, Shi, Shi Xuan Da Bu Tong, or Ten Date. The, the one with 10 dates. So I think that's just kind of a fun game to play and it's a, it's a way to learn Chinese. Um, another one that will come up a lot in formulas is the organs. And because formulas are acting on the organs, sometimes we'll see the name of the organ in the name of the formula. And so again, this can be a very convenient way to know what a formula does. It's just, if you know the Chinese, you, it will sometimes tell you what it does. And so, one, we can know the organs. I think usually it's, we see more the yin organs being used. So heart, lung, liver, kidney, spleen. Those are the ones that come up in formulas more. Stomach does come up quite a bit, that we have a lot of formulas that act on the stomach. And then kind of like as uh, an addendum on there, sometimes it's good to note. Zhong means center, and that's just uh, for formulas that act on the middle jowl. Sometimes you'll see the word zhong in there instead of spleen or stomach. So knowing the formulas can be useful, but what's really useful is when we combine them with certain action words. So we have like bu means tonify or fill or um, I'm trying to think of the Nigel Weissman one, supplement. Xie means to drain or to sedate. Uh, qing is another one that means to clear. So it's kind of like once we know some organs and then we know some actions, we can kind of put them together about are we tonifying an organ, are we draining an organ, or things like that. And so that kind of comes up in a lot of formula names. So like when we talk about tonifying things, we have bu fei tong, tonify the lungs decoction. Bu zhong yi qi tong, tonify the middle and augment qi decoction. Um, so there zhong means middle, we're tonifying the middle. Tian Wang Bu Xin Dan. Here, Bu means tonify, Xin means heart. So this is Heavenly Emperor tonify the heart pill. It's actually for kidney and heart not communicating, so it also tonifies kidney yin, but we're also tonifying the heart. And so uh, I, th I think we have a couple more, but those are some some simple tonifying ones. We talk about draining. Wang Dan Xie Gan Tang. Xie means to drain. Gan means liver. So this is telling you that this formula drains the liver. Long Dan refers to the chief ingredient, Long Dan Sao, drain the liver decoction. So for heat and damp heat in the liver and gallbladder. 
Uh, this one we have to be, uh, be careful with because a lot of times we said sheen means heart, but a lot of times when they say sheen, they're actually talking about the area below the heart. So Bensky translates this as epigastrium. So when you say xie xin tang, we're not actually draining the heart, we're draining the area below the heart. So this is more for middle jiao things. So that's, that's kind of a tricky one that you have to pay attention to. Qing is another one that will have like a qing wei san, clear the stomach powder. Um, so that word clear comes up a lot when we're trying to disperse or get rid of things like qing qi hua tong tong, clear the qi and transform phlegm decoction. So knowing some of those action words can be good. Uh, gui pi tong, pi means spleen, so restore the spleen decoction. Shen qi wan. Uh, here, shen means kidney, so this is kidney chi pill. So it's kind of like knowing the organs can be um, beneficial in knowing what the formula does. And there are a lot more examples, but these are some of the more common ones that we learn in class. Oh, look at that. I should have gone through each one. Oh, well. I think the, uh, maybe this is the last thing we'll talk about in terms of Chinese terms, but um, words that imply the formula has been modified. So we'll see these a lot that um, uh, jia means plus and jian means minus. So when we're adding or subtracting things, we might see those words come up. And so uh, the way this usually comes up in formulas is we have one term jia wei. Remember wei means ingredient. So Jia wei just means added ingredient. Or if we're both adding and subtracting things, we can say jia jian. So jia jian means plus or minus. Uh, but then Bensky will translate these as augmented or modified, but you can think jia wei is added ingredient or modified, we made additions to it. Or augmented, we made additions to it. Jia jian means plus or minus, so we modified it, we added some things and subtracted some things. So we'll see this come up a lot in our um, in some of our modifications, like jia wei xiao yao san. We have original xiao yao san. Jia wei means added ingredients. So we added, we modified the formula by adding two ingredients. And so he translates this as augmented rambling powder, but we could just just say it's added ingredient xiao yao san. We add um, jiuzi and uh, mudan pi. So it's Xiao Yao San, but it also clears heat. So another example, we, uh, uh, Wei Rei Tong is a Solomon Seal decoction. I'm not sure that we actually use the original formula very much, but we have uh, our modification is called Jia Jian Wei Rei Tong. So plus or minus. So we've added some ingredients and taken some ingredients away. So when you see those words like Jia Wei or Jia Jian, that's what it means. We're, um, we're just either adding things or adding and subtracting things to the formula. So that can kind of help you out. I, mean, I know some people that, that really threw them, threw them off for a while that they didn't realize that um, like Jiao Wei Xiao Yao San was the same as Xiao Yao San just with added things. So. so that is it. Hopefully you're all still there. Can click over to YouTube and see if I'm still there, see what kind of delay we have going. So I'm glad we were able to make it. Sorry about the delay. I was going to say we can do questions, but we're on such a delay that I'm still talking about uh, Jaji and Wei Rei Tong. I don't want to, I feel kind of bad stopping for questions because it'll take you another minute to catch up with me. Hopefully, this will be better. Uh, next week. I have some stuff to do on Monday, so hopefully this will be better by Monday. Okay. Great, we are still here. That's good to hear. So if you have any, if we just want to do like a short Q&A, I think we're like running over a little bit because we had a lot of issues starting. So if you want to, if anybody has any questions you want to ask them, go ahead and ask them in the chat. If you're watching on the replay, you can ask in the replay. Um, maybe something I'll say is um, in terms of what's going on, lately I've had a lot of people asking me about tutoring. Do you do tutoring? And a lot of people contacting me. And I feel like normally my answer is no. I'm not really into, um, 
I'm just not into into it's never really worked out very well and sometimes it's been hard with people and I say what kind of problems are you having and they're like I don't know everything and it's kind of hard it's that's kind of hard to work with but lately I had a lot of people asking me contacting me and saying do you want tutoring so I'm thinking maybe a, a solution for that is I'm thinking about doing like a group tutoring sort of thing and what's that what that's going to look like instead of um, paying like a per hour or per tutoring session for one-on-one. -on -one. Cause basically if I was gonna do one-on-one -on -one tutoring, I would charge an exorbitant amount of money. I would be charging at least $80 an hour because that's how much I charge for acupuncture. So if I'm gonna be giving up acupuncture to do tutoring, I'm gonna charge you $80 an hour. And I feel like most people don't wanna pay that. So kind of a solution there I thought is maybe we could do something like creating a membership site where it's like you would pay a monthly fee like $30 a month and then we'd have like a weekly session and we could all decide on a topic that you want to go over and we could do like an hour long review of whatever topic and then uh, then those that would be online those videos would be recorded they would go into a repository on the site so you could always go back and watch them later but this would be like a, a monthly fee for group tutoring so if that's something that you're interested in um, going um, I might I might be starting that next week so send me an email if that's something that you're um, interested in and because we're, we're gonna I'm gonna try to do like a little bit of a trial run I have a group of people that they're starting out in their in their fundamentals class and they're starting out in their uh, first year and so there was a group of people that wanted to do a group tutoring thing so we're gonna start out with like very basic stuff like yin and yang and the five phases maybe some acupuncture stuff like the point categories and things like that so if that's something you're interested in uh, send me an email I can ten send you some more details about that um, I was going to say something else. Um, this is interesting. If we can substitute Dongshan for Renshin and Ba Jintang, can we substitute with Bei Qi? Possibly you're getting a little bit different. So Bei Qi is another name for Huang Qi or Astragalus. And like, like when we talked about the formulas, we had Ba Jintang, then we had Shi Chuan Da Bu Tong. And so the part of the extras that you add in there, basically if you add Huang Qi, you're getting really close to Shi Chuan Da Butong. So sometimes it might be just you Shi Chuan Da Butong. Um, it's probably still okay. It might be a little bit different just because uh, Huang Qi is a little bit more drying, whereas Ren Shen and Dong Shen are a little bit more moistening. So you might have to worry about that. Um, so there might be there might be some differences, but it, but it's also probably okay because again, we often take Ba Jen Tong and add Huang Qi and Rogue Wei to it, and it becomes Shi Chuan Da Butong. So you might be adding a little bit of heat when you do that, but um, it might be okay. But also, I feel like Dong Shen is not very hard to come by. Like if you like if you couldn't get ginseng, it's very expensive. That's that's very understandable. But I don't know. I feel like Dong Shen is very common. Um, Leon Hammer. I'm I'm not familiar with uh, with that. I would have to um. I would have to look into that and see what it is. But contemporary Chinese medicine. I don't know about that. Cause we had a podcast. Do I still have a button for this? We had a podcast. So I so I did a podcast. Podcast.tcmstudy.net is the is the podcast. And so this last week on the podcast, I talked to one of my friends from school, Patrick Gitley, and kind of one of the things is like, we're both really snooty about Chinese medicine. We're, um, what's the word, stuck up, pretentious. We're, we're really into the traditional aspects of Chinese medicine. And I think that kind of came through in our, in our conversation there. So I'm, I'm one of those people where like, I'm actually not into the, like the contemporary part or the modern aspect. Sometimes you see people like, um, they have machines that can take the pulse. They have like probes to probe the points. They um, things like that. They try. They want to bring functional blood work into the medicine. And usually, my opinion is like, Zhang Zhang Jing was pretty good at what he did, and he didn't have a sigma manometer or any of that stuff. So I feel like it's okay. At least for me, I like to stick to that traditional stuff and developing those traditional skills. And that's that's a very very good skill set to have. Um, 
Um, so I feel like I would rather, like I think there are a lot of people who are trying to innovate and I would rather master what's already there than trying to uh, like prematurely innovate. So I, uh, I, I get kind of skeptical about some of that stuff, but also realize just like I'm really stuck up and pretentious. So it's, it's kind of like if it works for you, it's okay to go down that route. But if you want to stick to a more traditional route, I think it's okay to go that way too. A lot of people do a lot of different things and get really good results. So it, that's that's at the end of the day, that's what's that's really what matters. So, um, yeah. So I'll, I'll have to I'll have to look into that because I don't I don't actually know um, much about him, and so I don't I don't want to. I, I think I just said some mean things that I probably shouldn't have said when I don't know very much about him. But I would have to look into that. Um, taking Bao Huan, Zhang Dan Gu Chun Wang. I don't, I don't recognize that formula in Liu Wei Di Huang Wang. Um, okay, so I guess, I guess I should say that normally I, I don't like to um, comment on individual situations just because um, one, there are certain legal issues with that. I think that in terms of malpractice insurance and uh, legalities of uh, if I start giving specific advice, then it becomes there becomes a patient practitioner relationship, and that and that gets into legal issues. It also gets in there. Are, there are like also weird ethical things in there because it's really to give proper advice. I would need to see you as a patient, do a full intake, and um, look at your tongue and pulse in order to give any meaningful advice. Um, but in terms of, but just generally talking about formulas, there there are a lot of people who do that, that instead of modifying formulas, they just combine two formulas together. And so uh, that is kind of a thing, but I would make sure that you're still thinking in terms of an actual diagnosis, that you're not just chasing symptoms where, it's so like sometimes people do that with supplements where it's like, I'm gonna take turmeric for my inflammation, and I'm going to take digestive enzymes for my digestive problems, and I'm going to take this vitamin for this, and this superfood for this. And so rather than trying to chase down each individual thing, think about what's the underlying pattern of disharmony. And again, this is just a preference thing. When I do acupuncture, I like to use the fewest needles as possible. When I, make, when I prescribe herbs, I like to use the fewest herbs as possible to get the job done. And so really thinking about what's the underlying pattern that we're trying to address here. Um, and so this is also kind of like a, I wanna make a video about like stories uh, my Chinese teacher told me. One of the stories my Chinese teacher told me was, say you have a ball of string. This ball of string or net. Say you have a net. I feel like one time he told me the story it was a ball of string. One time he told me the story it was a net. So it's like, say you have a net. It's really knotted. It's really tangled. Uh, and you want to untangle it. How do you approach it? Well, what you do, the, strat the proper strategy would be go for the biggest knot first and untangle that. And once you untangle the biggest knot, a lot of the smaller knots will become untangled automatically as a consequence. So sometimes that's the way I think of acupuncture and herbs is that we want to go for the biggest knot. We want to go for the biggest problem. And once you, once you address that, sometimes some of the smaller issues will become untangled automatically. So, so so sometimes you see people have these formulas like, oh, this person has spleen chi deficiency with liver chi stagnation, with heat harassing the heart, with underlying kidney yang deficiency, with dampness obstructing the middle jaw, and they're like they're, the list goes on and on. And then they try to build a formula that addresses all of those things. Or I'm kind of like, just go after the main thing. Just maybe go after the one biggest knot. And it could be that once you tonify the spleen, then once the spleen is working, the dampness will go away. Once the spleen is working, the liver will no longer be able to over, overact. Once the spleen is working, you can digest food properly, and that will build up the, the roots and the kidneys. So um, that's kind of how I would approach it. And some, because sometimes you do, I think I'm just rambling and repeating myself, but yes, yeah, sometimes you do see people that they take, I take this formula for this problem, and this formula for this problem, and this formula for this problem, and I would say, find the big problem and go after that. Hmm. 
Let's see. Stay snobby. I like that. I'm I'm real. I get real snobby about certain things. I was kind of a, I'm kind of a, a jerk in school about some of those things too. Um, let me think if there was anything else. I feel like we haven't been going for for a long time, but we have been going for a long time. Let me type this in so it can come up on the screen. Somebody asked me about this um, in a comment, and I forgot to uh, bring it up. I forgot to make like a picture for it, so um, I'll just type it in as if I asked the question. And bring it up now. This was I think I think she was I think she's on the uh, Patreon as well. Um, but this was a comment on one of the videos where she was basically asking, what about children? What kind of things can we treat with children? How do we know when, um, uh, when, when children should come in for treatment? And so, I'm going to be honest, I don't really like children. Like some people specialize in pediatrics. I don't really like children, so I never, I was never real enthusiastic. I didn't pay too much attention in school when we got to that topic. Um, Oh, somebody asked what I'm drinking. This was tea. This was some puar, but it was from last night, so it's not very good. Um, I think there was one time in the clinic I had someone come in with a child, and I made somebody else treat them just because I didn't want to treat children. So I'm not really into children. I don't know a whole lot about children. I'm not sure I'm the best one to be commenting about Chinese medicine and children. But I guess here I'll say some things that I've kind of run into or have heard from others. One, if you're taking a board test, like I think this came up on one of my board tests. Apparently there's this thing where you can like look at lines on the hand and that or on the thumb and that has something to do, some diagnostic factor in children. So if you're about to take a board, make sure that you look in that page in HB Kim. There's like half a page in HB Kim about that because somebody said, oh, I got this weird question about this thing about lines on the hand in children, and I had never heard of that. I don't think we learned that in school. So if you're taking a board test, maybe look that up because there's some sort of diagnosis thing with lines on the hand. Um, so that's, if you're taking a test, something to think about. Children, one thing is that from what I've heard, children respond ridiculously well to acupuncture and treatment. Um, it's like when you talk about these miracle results, um, just really surprising outcomes, a lot of times it happens in children. And I've actually, I, I guess I've seen this happen in younger people too, that when I was in Kentucky, I had some high school athletes come in to see me a lot. And it was just, it was like amazing that like they'd have this problem and you'd stick in just a couple needles and in one treatment, their problems were completely gone and never came back. And it, it really made you look like a wizard just because these people responded so well. And I think it's something that, um, this is gonna make me sound old and grumpy, but I think it's like when you're younger, you're like you're chi, you're more innocent and your chi is more pure, that you have less things going on to muck it up. Like for me, treatment doesn't work very well on me because like I drink three bottles of Diet Mountain Dew every day and I have a crappy diet. And so if somebody is trying to do acupuncture or herbs, they have to compete with all that other junk that's going on. But when you have um, a child or even like teenagers, they don't have that. So you can get really good response from your treatment. Um, sometimes we can actually even tone down the treatment because of that. So a lot of people with children, they won't actually needle the children. They'll just do, um, they'll, they'll educate the parents about uh, doing massage along the channel, sometimes massaging down the stomach channel or massaging down the large intestine channel for colic and things like that. Um, I think they do a lot of stuff with magnets, like instead of ear seeds, they use magnets and so they'll stick things like that. Uh, they'll do non-invasive ways to stimulate the points. And I don't find that that works very well on adults, but apparently it works really well on kids. Um, same thing with herbs, that a lot of tinctures, I feel like we have these tinctures that are really watered down and I feel like there's just not enough herbs in there for them to be effective they actually work really well on children. So like Blue Poppy has a children's line of uh, tinctures and uh, they're glycerin based and the droppers and they and people say they actually work really, really well. So that's one thing is um, children, they respond really well to treatment. 
and they respond they can respond almost immediately uh i had, I had one roommate that one of, one of our friends had um a child that had a lazy eye and they were trying to uh, correct the lazy eye and they did all these things they did the eye patch and they got to the point where they're going to have to go to surgery well she brought them over for acupuncture and they like needled a gallbladder point and as they were simulating the needle the eye went back into alignment so it's like you can get some really cool results with children um, um oh that doesn't automatically go away anymore. I have a different computer now, so not everything's set up the way I like it. Uh, yeah, using a smaller amount of herbs can work, or I would say just really diluted, like uh, like those. Some of those blue poppy formulas have a lot, but you're just only doing a few drops, so it works really well. Um, Oh, I, th I thought this was going to be like more uh, specifically about children um, because I was going to make the comment. Um, I feel like this is like a very a very Western thing because um, like I know people who work in pediatrics when they get children, they tr they try to be very gentle and they try to be very nice. And a lot of times they'll get like toy cars and run the cars along the channels, or they'll just do seeds or magnets. Where I feel like in China. Like they aren't they aren't nice about it. It's like if you want, you're getting acupuncture, they will strap you down to a board and stab you with needles. And if you scream and wriggle, they don't care. Um, so I feel I, I just feel like that's kind of a, a funny Western approach to it. Is that um, uh, we 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 try to be nice nicer to our kids when when they might just say suck it up. You're getting stabbed with needles. Um, acupressure. I don't know. That's one of those things where, like, I'm really I'm snooty and stuck up, and I'm not entirely into it. I think if you're like doing a whole twin ah protocol where you're moving stuff through the sinew channels, that might be okay. But like, is massaging stomach thirty six the same as sticking a needle in stomach thirty six? I'm not. I'm not sure. Um. Oh, lasers. That sounds kind of fun. I know. I, I knew a person who did that. I know. And I don't know much about that or what the efficacy of like of that is like. So, um, what else was I gonna say? Children. The other thing. This is. I. I don't know this. I don't know the source of this. This is just something I overheard somebody saying. So take this with a grain of salt. But what somebody told once told me about children is, in children, depending on the age the channels and points aren't as well developed. So if you're needling children, stick to the big points. So things like LI11, stomach 36, stick to those bigger points that sometimes the smaller points just aren't, their, their channels aren't developed enough for those, for those points to be there. So if you're like, I'm gonna use gallbladder 38, that might not be as effective as using a, a more major point. So I'd say stick to your, um, uh, that was something I heard was stick to the big points. And I, th and I think that's really common. Also, just because in children, you don't always use a lot of needles. A lot of times when you do needle them, you don't retain the needles. So you just like, go like, boop, real quick, and then pull it out before they have a chance to scream at you. I think that's all I have to say about children. But again, I don't really like children. So there are probably other people who have more things to say about children. Um... I, uh, yeah, so I just moved to Colorado. I'm not sure what that's like right now. Um, so I don't know. I haven't been, I haven't been, I haven't been trained in injection, so I would, I would be hesitant to do that. And then, um, and again, this just comes back to like, I'm very traditional. It's like, I know, I know people like to do new things and they, and we should be innovative and things like that. But I'm also like, Zhong Zhongjing wasn't injecting B12 in, in the point, so I don't know. It sounds it sounds a little bit too much like dry needling to me, and so I would I would rather stick to something that I can make in terms of a TCM fit into that theory of a diagnosis and treatment principle. And I'm I'm just not sure how B12 or how different substances injected how that would fit into there. But that's something that that I think they're doing this a lot more in China. So it's it might be worth reading some of the research in China that I knew I know they do like. IVs of ginseng and stuff like that. So it could be that there's um, 
more uh, research about that going on in China. I don't know a whole lot about that. I just get really stuck up and pretentious and stick to my TCM. So I think I'm going to say that's about it. We're, uh, I feel like we went a little bit longer, but really it's just for the first half an hour I was talking to myself because our live stream wasn't working. So hopefully this one works. Um, we'll put that up. And there are some handouts that go with the first section. I'll put those down in the description of this newer uh, video, and hopefully that works well. Uh, again, I think we're going to do a trial run of some group tutoring. If you want to get in on that, send me an email, and I'll send you the details. You can just uh, tcmstudy.net has my email on it. I think that's about it. It's Friday. Have a good weekend. I'm going to sign out. We'll see you next time.